Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, May with Michaels. I'm with Eris Phillips. We are in my new studio on 1113 Falcon Street, um, Brooklyn Blooms HQ headquarters. The other one is on No Strength, the smaller shop, my first shop, my baby shop, um, on 433 North Street Avenue. But we're here in the big shop today. And today we're going to be making uh, a silk foil arrangement. Uh, but also doing some painted leaves. So I'll show you. Here's some, I pre made some, but we're going to make some one together as well. Um, and these leaves are like Virginia leaves. So very, very pretty. So here we did a nice um, sponge painting, and then we're going to do a, it's called an African uh, mud cloth motif over the, over the, <laughs> water cutting, okay? Or sponge painting. So I have my bowl here too, all my ingredients. We're gonna do some tape, tape our base. Um, I have some flowers. I pre-cut some flowers already. Water roses, daisies, and like peony. Um, what else we got? Some hanging. Uh, can't remember the name of this flower. I always forget. But we also have um, some prosia as well. Yeah. And that'll be it. All these little dancing little babies here. Little food, like dried. I like to call them my dancers because they like float. Okay, so first we're gonna go. So where everybody, where's everybody from? Like Texas, Chicago. Hmm. Cali. Oh yeah, well, I'm jealous. I want to be California on the beach right now. <laughs> it's a snowstorm. GA, Tennessee. Yeah, sunny seat. Throw it in my face. Sunny California, Florida. Philly, okay. Jersey. Long Island, yes, it's crazy. Hi, <laughs> everybody, California. See, man, all these other places. Hey, New York, Philly. North Carolina, I got family there. Yeah, yeah, okay. New York City. Y'all yeah, stuck in with me because that's too. Okay, amazing. So glad to have you guys here and joining us, or joining me rather. Um, oh, wait, Nebraska. Okay. All right. So everywhere. That's beautiful. I'm glad to have you guys here. Oh, Miami. Don't even talk about it. I don't even want to hear it. I don't even want to hear nothing about Miami. <laughs> Uh, Illinois, okay. All right, cool. How do I decide what flowers to use? Um, I'm a pretty let's all of Vegas, okay. Um, how do I do it? Just depends on what my collection is or where I am, you know. Um, what season it is. The seasonality actually changes a lot of choice, you know, dictates a lot of your choices. So it just depends on the season. But like now it's winter time. Um, so it just depends. It's not that many, but actually it's coming to spring. There's a lot of early spring flowers, tulips and daffodils. And um, I see a lot of winter greens on the summer. So it looks like this. Uh, it looks like it looks for, I'm sorry. These are silk flowers. These are all silk flowers. Would this technique work on paper flowers? Um, yeah, it can. Yeah, definitely. As long as the flowers can definitely work. Do I look for a variety of color and shape flowers? Yes, I definitely do. I like variety. It gives you depth, it gives you interest, it gives you a lot of you know things to, to work with when I have a variety of color and shape. Uh, so you won't have like it won't be so heavy. I like to have like a little bit dancing flowers, like a little blue uh, flower I just showed you guys. I think it'll be are we ready to start. Okay. I think I think we're ready. All right. So I have like I said, I have these, but Let's move this for a minute. So 
So I have I cut one already. So what I want to do is put some paint on my board. I've used this board for many different projects. So it's become very colorful. You don't need too much because we're not going to be doing it. Well, it depends. Let's, let's do a lot of blue since it's so dreary outside. Let's do some, a lot of bright colors today. Got some yellow, some green, some pink. I love, love color. And my favorite, one of my favorites, gold. So now we have a nice palette here. Can you review the colors you're using to paint with again? Sure. So I'm using native turquoise. And this is pink chiffon. And this is dark yellow. And this is called green, very simple. <laughs> and this is called full blue, which is a place I wish I was right now. So there you go. And also gold. All craft smart. Great paint. I love it. It sticks to the leaves great. Um, it sticks to the real leaves great. Uh, I even have dried leaves at home that I painted and it, the paint is still there. So, but still, it's still, you know, delicate, but it's still, you know, great quality. So now- Do you use, um, do you use a matte glossy or satin finish with the paint? Um, I use a satin, but I really, it doesn't matter for me. I just get paint. I just look at color. I usually don't look at the the type of paint. I'm like, oh, I like that color. And then I look at the type of paint for a second. But usually the acrylic uh, paint, satin or matte, depending on what kind of look you want, works. And I also want to use sponges. I got this from the variety pack of, at Michael's. They have different size sponges. Uh, so it gives me, and they have different textures to them. So that really helps uh, when I am trying to do different textures, get a different texture in my design. So now I'm just going to just dip it, just randomly, just sponge it. You know, when we were in like kindergarten and preschool, we do finger painting and take the sponges. I'm just going to take you back to those days. So this is yellow. I don't really worry about it drying too much. I like it to blend. I kind of just randomly choose where do I want this color to be. So we have this. So I took the pool blue and the dark yellow, and I've done some sponging. Uh, I think I'm gonna take maybe some gold and just kind of randomly put it there. So you got some little flakes of gold there. And I think I'm going to do the motif in pink. But we're gonna let this dry for a second and we're gonna do another one in a different color. So I'm gonna do pink, do the same thing. And also sometimes it'll be paint that I've used from the previous color and I'll just let it let it run through. It just comes out so beautiful when it, 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 it starts to blend together really, really nicely. So you can see little spots of pink and blue in there and some sparks of gold. So it looks really nice when I paint over it with the motif because it kind of blends it together and brings everything together, make it cohesive.
maybe a little blue. And I really don't have to think about it. It's just like, do what you feel, right? So we have our two leaves. Any questions so far? Not yet. Uh, can you tell us how you got into working with flowers? Yes, yeah, so I got into working with flowers. I've been working with flowers really all my life. My family had a balloon slash flower shop. More so balloons than flowers, but uh, we, were, we had a fridge with roses and things like that in it. So I would always like work with flowers in that way as a child. So I've been in working with flowers or working in a shop since I was a kid. Uh, so shop life is my life. <laughs> um, but yeah, my mom always had plants and things outside and just men in nature. I just love nature. So flowers are obviously in nature. So I've been, you know, an admirer of them for a long time. Um, but when I got to college, I needed a job. I didn't want to work in the cafe or anything like that. I never want to work in food. And I always like making things with my hands and being creative. And I always wanted to move, I knew I was going to move into New York City because um, I couldn't go to college in New York. So I decided to uh, find a job in flowers. And so happened that my, you know, my teacher's mom had a flower shop. So that's when I was like, okay, well, this is where I'm going to work. And I worked there for all four years. And yeah, that's where I learned like the basis the foundation of my floristry work, I found, I got from her. Okay, let me, let me see this. Yes, we have a couple questions. So do you wet the sponge first? You can, but I don't. I like, cause it's gonna make your paint a little bit more runny. If you wet the sponge, you want your paint to be thick. So you don't have to, I don't wet it. Um, but if you wanna clean it off a little bit to get uh, some of the other colors off, you can. But again, like I like to blend those colors. It just makes it a lot more like that, that blended effect and without having to even try because it's already done on your sponge. Um, but I would recommend cleaning your sponge after so it won't hard with a solid thing as far as water. Okay, and that also answered the other question about thinning the paint, so thank you. Yes, absolutely. So now I'm gonna get a little bowl. So I have my little bowl here with some water and my paintbrush. Make something to dry my brush off with. And so now I'm gonna start painting. And usually I cannot draw. <laughs> so that the, the mud clock pattern is easy for me. I can draw lines, I can do it, but I always like, I'm looking at different lines uh, in different architecture. I'm like, oh, how can I make these lines different on my next paint when I'm painting again? Um, but I, my, my classic mud cloth print, print is, is this one. It's the one I always seem to go to because it comes out so nice. It's just a very consistent pattern. But I might punk it up a little bit with another color or some dots. So while I break them up. So this is what I just did. And I just, you can continue or you can do polka dot like that. So I'll do some here, some here, or on some leaves I'll do the whole, this whole side, or I'll do a, a di diagonal, just depending on how I feel. Or how many leaves I'm doing too. Like these, this is another design that I, I did on the other leaf. And this is what I mean by a continuous one. But on this one, we're gonna break it up. 
So I'm gonna add some more. And so when I moved to New York, ironically, my first job was at a flower shop. <laughs> because I came to do fashion and 10 years ago, fashion was not all that inclusive, especially a girl coming from St. Louis, Missouri. I had locks at the time. I have a thick Midwest accent. I thought I was being different and being different was what they wanted, but it wasn't. So flowers always accepted me and allowed me to be creative and be myself fully. So it's all, flowers always stuck with me in one way or, or another. Even when I wasn't working with them, I craved to have them in my house. I just needed to be close to them in some sort of way. What size just, brush are you using? This is, what size is this? A 3-0. This is from the Artist Law Necessities Collection. I like this little brush. There we go. Because it gives me nice lines. And if I want a thicker line, I'll, I'll go to this one. And this one also may, helps me uh, draw a nice circles too. So this one's a 3 0, and this one's a 2. The thicker one's a 2. But I've worked in flowers for so long, but I feel like I still have so many things I want to do, uh, especially with the new shop. I want to be, I, I'm going to be able to host workshops in here now because I didn't have space in the other spot. Uh, I want, I love having mommy and me classes, like flower crown classes. Uh, or, aunts bring their, ne their nephews or their nieces. It's really cute to see the kids interact with the flowers and, and make crowns. Uh, it's just important, especially being in New York City, for kids to touch nature. They were so disconnected from it. So it's very important to me that, you know, they get introduced to it at a young age and have an appreciation for flowers, for beauty, for natural beauty. Can really you tell easy. everyone where they could go to find these workshops and information? Do you have a website or? Um... Yeah, so we haven't posted any workshop yet as, you know, due to COVID and due to me just opening the new shop. Um, we're still trying to figure out logistics in that, in that way. But always follow me on Instagram, Brooklyn Blooms NYC. And if you're in the area, uh, you can, we always keep you updated um, on workshops. Although I don't have them very much, but they do, they are very time consuming. Um, people are always asking to do them. But I do do private ones as well. Uh, but yeah, we're just trying, still trying to figure out how to navigate the COVID thing and having workshops and a lot of people in here. Um, but yes, please stay tuned on IG. That would definitely be the best place to, to get that information. So I'm just going to add a few more of this design to my leaf and we're going to do the other one in a different design just so we have some variety. I like to think uh, like uh, you know, I'm putting together an outfit so every piece need to be tied into each other and add some you know a little fun a little funkiness. I describe my style as funky. So that's how we're going to keep it. Are there differences in the quality of silk flowers? There are definitely differences in quality of silk flowers. Uh, Michael's has actually really good quality and a nice variety uh, Michael's have of different flowers. I'm not the biggest fan of silk flowers, but when 
I went shopping for the silk files of at Michaels. I was really like appreciative of the variety and how well they look. I'm like, wow, this looks almost look like a real peony or a real garden rose. It's very impressed. So I there definitely is a difference in quality. Okay, so I have a few here. I'm just gonna leave it at the top because this is gonna go in our arrangement. This is this is gonna go in our arrangement. And so you can see uh it's gonna be, you know, it'll be showing at that part on the okay. All right, so we have one more we're gonna paint. I'm gonna clean my brush. And I'm gonna use the thicker one for this one. I think let's do some gold. And I like to do this in like the simple. The gold isn't showing up as as good. We can go over it again. That's another like simple design that I like to do too. We have any questions? I love answering questions. Not uh, at this moment, just um, okay. a lot of comments that these look nice and very pretty and I, I think they're just having a great time. Good. Okay, I don't think we're gonna do too much to this one. So I like the watercolor, how it's looking by itself. It's gonna add some of the motif to the other side where it's more green so we can see it. Okay. Amazing. These, I feel like someone just said, ask me what kind of leaves these are. It's called Dracenia leaves. And there was another question on how do you, how do you pick your patterns that you use? Um, I go, I have a Rolodex of patterns in my brain. <laughs> uh, and I try not to use the same ones, but these are the ones I kind of gravitate to. This one is what I gravitate to. This one that I just did is another one I gravitate to, the one with the three dots. Um, and even sometimes with these, I might go through and put little baby dots of like maybe a light blue bit. Maybe we can do that to show you guys. Just to give it a little something different, a Brooklyn Bloom twist. So I'm gonna do that. I love details. The details is what matter most to me. Those little things you kind of got to squint and be like, oh my God, I didn't even see that. How did they even think about that? But I love those. Those are so important to me because it, it, the overall picture, it helps bring everything together. So I'm just adding the little dots. And this is a good way to refresh your old leaves too. If you painted some old silk leaves, you want to refresh them, just go back and you know add a little something else to it, just to give it another look. So I've added my little dots, super cute, like Pac-Man. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right, I think we have enough leaves. This is another cool one that I like to do too. Dotson. 
and lines. Just making sure I'm getting everybody's question. Oh, you like my, my sweater? Thank you. I thrifted it. <laughs> it's one of my favorite. I'm like, let me put my, my favorite sweater on today. It's cold today, but I still got to be cute. So, you know, New York is hard to be cold and cute, but I hope I, I achieved it. So Gloria said uh, that this makes me want to refresh, refresh some of the wreaths that I uh, have done in the past. Going to get them out and give them a wonderful new look. So this is a great idea. Yes, you can definitely do that. So I thought I put my phone on do not disturb, but I guess I'm gonna... how many leaves would I use in the arrangement? Um, I usually we only use like six of them. How many I have? Like one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our arrangement with our bowl. Also got this from Michael's like little half bowl. It's really cool shape. I have my tape, which I don't believe they sell in Michael's, but they might have it. You can also just use scotch tape too. And I'm gonna do something called a grid method. That's what a lot of floors do. You do a grid method. And I'll show you what that is in a moment. Then I'm gonna do four across. This is such a big vessel. That's three and four. And then four across the other way going this way. One, two, three, four. Well, that, that doesn't want to stay, okay? <laughs> Just secure all your tape, you'll go all the way around. For this, can they also use the green floral tape? Yes, you can use green floral tape. Any tape. Well, not any tape, like, but thin tape. Any thin tape you can you can find. Green floral tape is great. It just shows. Uh, the clear tape is nice because you can't see. It, it covers your mechanics. It's just a little bit harder to cover uh, the green floral tape that's around your face. But you can still use it. Just be sure to cover your mechanics. And this is called mechanics. Chicken wire or any fun, those um, Oasis sponge, which is I do not use, it's not so friendly. Uh, that's mechanics, okay? So we have our tape base. And now I have some geranium leaves here. I love the color, it's so cute. And I love, one thing I do love about silk flowers, it has a wire in it. So when you move it, it's, it stay where you tell it to stay. With flowers, with real flowers, you have to work with them because they're really the boss. So you just have to learn how to, uh, you know, navigate with them instead of having you navigate them. You got to work with the bees. I can do whatever and it, it stays. Okay, so we're just going to start in the front like this. We want that to be hanging down. Sorry, guys. Going to be hanging down. And then I have some ivy. I'm also going to put that in there, too. I like to mix my greens. I like variants and and different things 
uh, different type of textures in my arrangements. So there we go. Oh, I forgot one thing. Our shells. So this is going to be our fillers. Since we're not using water, I'm going to pour this in here. Can you tell them which grid space you put the leaves in? Which grid space I put the leaves in? I put the leaves in at the bottom. Well, I have one at the bottom right here. Like one, maybe one up from the bottom one. So this is from, this is the edge. I have one, two, so two up on one side. And then that's to cover this circumference. And then to come up, I go all the way to one, two, three, four on my right hand side. I'm sorry, on my left hand side. This is right, this is left. And then I'm gonna put her here to let that part hang over. And now we have most of our circumference covered with leaves, right? So these two big pieces are really good for covering and that feeling, that initial feeling part. So here we go, here. And now, I like to start with my focal flowers, my face flowers, the garden roll. These are really cute, right? So we have these. So I'm going to place one here. See? And one up. I like to create like a sort of a triangle for symmetry. Uh, we like to work in odd numbers, threes, fives, you know, just that for the eye can follow a lot easier when it's in those odd numbers. So I have my rows and my two rows is here. And that symmetry doesn't always have to be with the same flower. It'll have to be three flowers. I have another focal flower here. Is your methods of place flowers opposite each other? Not necessarily. Um, it just depends on what, in this case, yes, they can be opposite because we're doing a one-sided arrangement as well, uh, but you don't want to be so opposite that they're so, uh, it's polka dot. So we'll, I'm going to show you how to not make it look like that. And have you cut them a certain length? I pre-cut them already. So one of them is longer than the other because you want something you want you don't want all your stems to be the same as the length because if they are it's gonna have a really flat it's gonna come out flat we don't want flat we want depth we want some interest we want some tall some short some really deep some really hanging out so you I pre cut some of these just to uh, speed up the process but you kind of want to measure so I'll measure some for you guys um, when I put in the daisies. So we have these, um, I don't know, maybe eight inches long. And I'm gonna put the peony here, nestled in, right? So we have our triangle, one, two, three. I'm gonna turn it so I can see. And also the, the stones at the bottom, the shell, help kind of keep your stems together as well. So we have three here. Let me see if I can adjust the camera a little bit to see. Okay. With this one's you want to make them a little bit off to the side. So we still have this side to work with. Okay, so now we're going to add the purple daisies. I have some cut, but we're going to cut some too. This is the long stem. So I'm going to keep some long, keep some short. I'm going to tuck these in. I'm going to use about five or six of these. 
have another little short one. And I put that one here. This other short one, I'm gonna put it there. Just to kind of tuck it in and add some color down there. You can't, you don't have to see everything, but it's gonna poke out just a little bit. And then we're gonna so since we have our purple, we're gonna scatter that over this way. So here my long stem. I don't think I wanna, I'm not gonna cut it too much. I like these clippers from Michaels. They cut the wires super easy, like, like butter. Like it just goes right through. So I'm gonna cut these here. Leave the leaf on off the matter because it's not a real flower. So um, but the leaves just add to, you know, add to your arrangement. So I'm gonna have her sticking out because we wanna create, now we're creating some shape here. This purple flower. I don't know the exact name of it. It's a purple, a sort of purple daisy. Maybe even an aster daisy to be. And so now I'm just gonna stick that one in here too. I'm just gonna basically create like a nice little cascade of these purples here. What was the brand of the clippers? Um, I'm not sure of the brand of the clippers. I know it's the Michael's brand because they have the, the green. They all have the, the green. You can find them in the floral section. But these are the, I know they're the heavy duty ones. I do know that. And so I'm gonna add this guy here. Just to elongate my arrangement. And the cool thing also about um, silk flowers is, it don't matter how you stick, if you wanna stick it in, to benefit, you can stick it into your arrangement to benefit you because it doesn't need to be in water. So I want this to be hanging a little bit. And it's not even like close to touch up the, the water, but it doesn't matter because it's not water. So just to have it hanging to give it some, you know, some real lifeness. <laughs> I'm gonna add some more purple. A longer stem to the back. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So now we've got our, that's cute, that's cute. So now we have our hole. So now that's a good thing to create these holes. We have our foundation here with our greenery. We have our focal flowers with our garden roses and our peony. And we started to scatter and introduce those purple daisies on this side and bringing them out on this side and have a nice shape here, right? So it's like, like spatter out. I love that. So now we're gonna funk it up with some protea. I know uh, those people in Miami and California, I know y'all know all about these naturally probably just to grow out of the ground. So jealous. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have these. So I, I cut some already. I'm just gonna stick it in between my purple. And I have another one. I'm gonna cut this one a little shorter. It's a little too long for me because you don't want it to stick out too much. How do you decide where to place the flowers now? So I'm placing the protea in these pockets that I've created. So if you have a pocket here, pocket there, where this one is, pocket there, another pocket back here, 
in a pocket there. So these pockets, I'm just gonna use about three protea and I'm creating my symmetry. Even with the purple uh, daisy, you see there's a symmetry here. You see three and even there's three. You always see like a three, some sort of three. This foundation is a rule, but it's not law. So you can break it sometimes. But my theory is you learn all those rules to adjust them, not to necessarily break them, but to use them to your advantage for your designs. Um, you can stretch the rules, if you will. So here, uh, I'm gonna add one more protea. One more. And I'm gonna turn it really quick to see how we can add her. Okay, so I've added it long. So now I've elongated. This is a great, great, great way to make your vessel look bigger or your arrangement bigger than your vessel by keeping your stems long. I know a lot of uh, beginner floors tend to cut their things really short or keep them super long. Um, so it's good to have some variance in, in length. So we got some short things, but we also got some long things too, okay? So I think this is looking really cute, really nice. We have our three. We also have our triangle. It's a very loose triangle. It don't have to be a perfect one, but you see the triangle the symmetry here, right? So now we have some more pockets. So I, I remember the name of this now. It's called a wisteria. A wisteria usually don't come in red. It'll come in purple or white or lavender. Um, I maybe even a light blue, but I'm not sure, quite sure on that. But the beauty of having so flowers, they come in any color. So here we go, we got red wisteria. And that's gonna go with our red protea. Um, and you know, pinks and red always go together, purple and red go together. The only little thing that's kind of off is that orange, but it's not really off because you got red and orange in the same family. So all these flowers end up being in the same family. And this is how I keep it funky, like, wait, what? How does it go together? But then this is kind of, you know, that red, it kind of brings everything together. So I'm just gonna stick that in those pockets that I've created for myself and let those hang, give us some drama, give us some movement. I love movement in my arrangements. I don't like things stiff. I'm gonna add another one. I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna add it to the bottom. I've added this one all the way to the bottom so it can kind of just lay on your table or if you want to put it on your mantle and let it drape. Um, wherever you want to place it. And then I'm gonna add one more. And let's see, what should we add this one? Maybe I won't add, I think two is good. Yeah, I think, I think we don't need a third. Don't need to overdo it. So I have two. Now I'm going to add my painted leaves. See, and the painted leaves have some pink in it. So it's going to bring in that um, garden rose, okay? So I'll put some in the back. So we can get that design. And again, like I said before, don't worry with your painting. Don't worry about painting these. Or you can, depending on where you place them, you can paint the whole leaf. But I like to paint. Just do the top half because most of this is going to be covered up anyway. So I'm just going to do a front facing so you can see the design. Right? I'm going to stagger them out a little bit. This is a nice long one. So we're going to put this one on this side where we put that tortilla at. Oh, 
Are we seeing this? Are we seeing it? Yes, very full, so full, so beautiful. Uh, and I have some non-painted ones too. So we're gonna stick those in as well. So it is, it is a nice pattern to go against our geranium leaves because it's so different, right? So I like to add a little, again, the funky leaves. We have our traditional like little garden style. Then we're gonna add a little, you know, a little something different. Can barely see it, but it's, it's supposed to peek out just a little bit. Just peek out. You don't have to be, you know, prominent. I'm gonna add another one of these. I'm gonna turn it so I can add it and show you guys. I'm gonna add one more. There are lots of good comments that they are inspired, that's beautiful and wonderful, um, and that you arrange flowers very well. Thank you. Do what I can. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. This is my first live class. Um, I hope you're entertained. <laughs> so I have added all my leaves. She is so cute. Look at her. Who knew silk flowers could be so precious? We are close up of everything. Everything is stiff. You know, everything is been, And as you add your leaves and your, your greens and your flowers, uh, things will start to intertwine with each other in, in conjunction with the tape. So you will have some help for everything to stay in place. And so actually I have one more thing I'm going to add. These little dried um, buttons, these guys. And we just gonna have like little fireworks, right? So you can take your scissors, gonna cut, cut it, and just add them in that part where it shoots out at. So we're gonna add to the shooting out, add to the drama. And then that blue paint, this is where this blue, we're bringing this blue in now. So all the colors are represented. Even with the yellow, we have yellow within the flower, the garden robe. Um, the gold is just, you know, you don't need an excuse to have gold. I mean, come on. <laughs> so we're just gonna add like maybe five of these. Tall in the back. So I have three, I'm gonna add one more. Add one in the front. I'm gonna cut it pretty short. Okay. So I, I don't know if you guys can see them. I've added them. Just a little touch. Just like do 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 do. Nothing. Nothing serious. Just a little touch of something. Okay, any questions? No, but um, Tori said that it definitely adds personality. Yes, I love personality. We do not want boring. We want funky and fun and free. And you know, this is art. So we wanna treat it as such. We wanna, the detail, these are one of those details that matter to me. Cause it's like, wait, where did that blue come from? And then I add this and it brings that blue in. So. It's a, it's a method to my madness when I add all these colors that when you paint your leaves, you can go crazy with the colors because then you're, you can bring those flowers in to kind of make it co all cohesive come together. Because at first, while all your ingredients are just laying there, you're like, wait, how does it all go together? But then when you put it together, they start to marry each other because we have pink in our leaf, we have yellow in our leaf, we have blue in our leaf. So, and then all those flowers, only color we don't have in our leaf is purple which is fine because it could be our anchor color um, and red as well. But those colors are in our flowers. So I think we'll be fine. Um, so they all end up going together. And even in the leaves, there's some pink, some pink tones and um, some purple tones in the leaf too. So yeah.
And in the back, I do have a hole here in the back. So I'm just gonna put some leaves in here and add that. And I, I cut those leaves from this really long uh, stem. It's just like a whole lot of them. So it's great to get those stakes that has a lot of leaves on it. And you can utilize that for everything. And it's enough to go around. So I'm gonna cut. that back part again. Okay. We're good to go. We can go to the Did anybody else have any other questions? Uh, comments <laughs> about Brooklyn Bloom. Um, remember this is recorded. Uh, so you can always go back and take a look at it, get lost, or you know, need some guidance. Uh, you can hit me up on Instagram, Brooklyn Blooms NYC. And if you want to tag or post your, your creation on IG, please tag um, made made it by Michael. Um, and also, oh I'm sorry, make it make it by Michael and also uh, uh Brooklyn Blooms NYC. Uh, any other questions? Anything else? The cutting pliers, these are the heavy duty wire pliers that I use. Um, I don't remember the brand, so please forgive me. Uh, but they all have this. And the, I brand, uh, the brand was Ashland, and I can put the link in the chat again. Thank you. Add the Ashland brand. Perfect. This is the Ashland brand. The hashtag is make it with my boots. So you can, so I can see all your lovely things. I would love to see. I would love to see your painted design. That's what I really want to see. Your painted leaf. The brand of paint I use is Craft Smart. All Craft Smart. It's pretty inexpensive. Like I think it's like three or four dollars, and they're not they're not expensive at all. So I have so many colors. I get all the colors. So they're really easy to stock up on. Yeah, I can't do more. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad I can inspire you guys to, you know, make you such, such a crazy, crazy time brand. All right. If you want to have more flowering classes, you know, I'll probably do them online. I, I'm trying to, to fit everything in because I do get a lot of requests to do classes. But now that I'm in my biggest space, I can definitely do that. And stay tuned, is all I can say. I can't tell you when, just stay tuned. But that's it for me, guys. I'm glad you came. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming. And thank you for all the congratulations. I'm glad to inspire you guys. Um, you know, in the way of the world, although your shoulders just turn to flowers, so they will definitely be the piece that you need to be. Um, recommendations for floral arrangement rules. Um, I would say we have a lot of florists who have classes on online classes like Passion, Passion Sue. She's on, she's on IG too. Um, Modane, M O D I N E. I know they have classes, Putnam and Putnam. They host a lot of classes on their website. So, and also YouTube. YouTube is a great uh, place. And also, if you want to intern in the shop. That's always great. That's the best way, hands on, to do it. Um, you know, it's time for I take a day in turn. If you want to give me a day of your time and learn about flowers and arranging, I offer, offer, offer that here in the, you know, the NYC metro area. Okay. But if you're not in New York, but you are in New York in Brooklyn, when the world is open again and beautiful once again, um, well, the world is always beautiful. The world is beautiful. Travel safely. Please come visit me. I have two stores. Google me on my Instagram, on my website, find the address. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. Have a beautiful day. And those who are stuck in the snow, be safe. And those who are not, I'm jealous. So <laughs> goodbye, guys.